Hello everybody and welcome to Finding Information on Research Methods and Design. My name is Amanda Bizet. I'm a reference and instruction librarian and invite, I invite you to contact me if you do have any questions following this presentation. You can contact me at abz, so A for Amanda, B-E-Z-E-T, at ncu.edu. I'm certainly happy to help. In today's session, we're going to focus on how to find more information about particular research methods and design, and we're also going to see which three databases allow you to limit your scholarly search results to a particular methodology used. Uh, so let's get started. And the first thing that we're going to do today is navigate to our research process guide here under the research help drop down menu. The research process, a guide, a starting with finding a research topic and going all the way down to scholarly publication. The area that we want to look at today is nestled here under uh, resources for dissertation research. So we do have a guide here called research methods and design. And in this guide, we talk a, a little bit generally about research methodology um, as it relates to research, and we provide uh, books and videos, scholarly articles, and a dissertations, uh, a way to search for dissertations, which we'll also take a look at tonight. And as we're talking about uh, research methods and design, I want to refer to this NCU definition of terms. This was something established by the School of Education, uh, but I believe it's in use throughout the university just to standardize the terms that we're using because you may hear uh, some researchers interchange the words like um, methods and methodology. So we just all want to be on the same page. So I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see this. Um, so we're starting at that broad paradigm at the top. Um, and then we're looking at our methodology, which can either be qualitative or quantitative, right? Um, or if you're using both, you're doing mixed methods research. And then we're looking at design. Um, so design, uh, there are some examples included here, phenomenology, case study, action research, grounded theory, or on the quantitative side of things, descriptive, correlational, experiment, experimental, quasi-experimental. And then be, below that are the methods used to gather that data. Um, so we often call these tests and measurements uh, down here on this level as well. So that could be um, a direct observation, open-ended questionnaire, survey, interview, focus group, or uh, archival data, tests, and surveys on that quantitative side of things. Uh, so I really like this handout uh, because it does then provide a more succinct definition here. Uh, so that we're all thinking about these terms the same way. So again, methodology is either quantitative, qualitative, or mixed, and design refers to uh, the techniques used to uh, approach that research topic, um, such as quasi-experimental design and quantitative research or phenomenology and qualitative research. And finally, the methods are the systematic tools used to recruit, sample, collect, and analyze or interpret that information. Um, so this handout is available for you there, but of course, the um, NCU Dissertation Center is where you're going to find a lot more extensive information about your uh, chapter three, so as it relates to research methods and design. So let's pop into that dissertation center while we're here, uh, just so you're aware of how to navigate to that information as well. So here you can go to, uh, we're here on the dissertation center homepage, and we can navigate to the chapter drop down menu and click on chapter three. And chapter three uh, is going to provide you with everything that you need to know about completing chapter three. So you can navigate here on the left-hand side of the screen uh, to see all of these different um, sections here. 
So as we're talking about um, research methods and design, uh, there's a couple of things we want to uh, consider. Uh, one is that your dissertation will require you to identify alternate or, or alternative methodology, methodologies and designs and indicate why they were determined to be less appropriate than the ones that you actually selected. So in other words, um, it's not that you just choose your method and you go for it. You still have to consider why the, the other method was not an appropriate way to go. And you will have to write a little bit about that. So um, it's important to be able to know where to gather all of this information. And uh, you must, you're going to want to choose the methods or design that is capable of answering your research questions. And different disciplines or fields often privilege the use of particular methodologies or designs. And this is something uh, that was, uh, that we saw a little bit on that, that handout, those examples. Um, we saw the different types of designs that were associated with either qualitative or the different types of uh, methodologies that were associated with qualitative or quantitative research. And uh, this is something you'll also want to discuss further with your chair. So here uh, we're going to start popping into some of these resources and we're going to start here with SAGE Research Methods. SAGE Research Methods is the most important resource that you'll want to know about as it relates to uh, research methods and design. This is a very comprehensive database of books, reference works, some journal articles, and videos as well as um, case studies on uh, research methods. So let's pop into this. This is a great way to get all of that background information and on you know the the research methods and design that you have selected for your particular study as well as look at the alternatives. So here on the research methods, Sage Research Methods homepage, we can of course do a um, general keyword search either here or even at the top of the screen here. But I want to go through uh, some of the, the tools that are available to you here as well. Uh, also as you scroll down you see different ways to explore content as well. Um, but I want to go to the tools at the top of the screen first and foremost um, because I like to start with this project planner. The project planner is a step-by-step -step, um, step -step guidance to complete your research project, as it says here at the top of the screen. And uh, it's very succinct, which is what I really like about it. So as you're considering research design, you can pop into that section and read about, let me do that, okay, and read about this a little bit further. So. Um, as I'm scrolling down, you'll see what is a research plan, what is research design. So we can expand that section. You'll see a brief video and then links to uh, appropriate resources within the SAGE Research Methods database. Uh, if we continue scrolling down, you'll see a section like which methods should I use? Uh, that can be helpful and then I'll continue to scroll down on the screen and at the bottom we have this really handy checklist questions to ask when deciding on a method. Uh, so this is really helpful and um, each of these sections can be downloaded individually or even cited individually. So if you wanted to cite um, this section on what kind of data do I want to generate, you can click on that cite button and it will cite uh, that particular resource from within this project planner tool. So the project planner is a really good starting point as you're uh, you know, going through that research process. And just remember that this is a general tool provided by this database, Sage Research Methods. So it does not provide any NCU specific requirements or advice here, right? It's just a tool provided by this database. 
Um, so I'm going to go back up to the tools area and I'll go back to the top, which is the methods map. So you can see the description here. It says this visualization demonstrates how methods are related and connects users to relevant content. So I'm going to pop into that methods map. Okay, so here we are on the methods map page. So we can search the methods map here uh, by putting in a search term. So I'm going to just start. Uh, you can see auto suggestions there, or I can actually start here with the actual visual component. So we're starting here with our broad concept of research methods. We see narrower terms on the right-hand side of the screen. And so I can say, well, I'm at um, the research design uh, phase. I can click on that and I see more narrower terms. I can even click view more to view all of those options here. So if I know that I am doing applied research, for example, I can click there. Or if I am doing experimental design, I can click there. Um, and then you can continue to navigate through this, uh, this methods map. And so if I'm ready to see all of the results, I can click search all content on experimental design or maybe I decide, oh, I, I know I'm doing quasi-experimental designs. So I'm going to click on that. Um, and then I have two more narrower terms, but I'm going to click uh, search all, con all content on quasi-experimental designs. And then we're going to see our search results. Now, our search results here are going to appear uh, the same as if I did do a search in the top of the screen here or in that basic search box in the in this in the center of the home page but the benefit here was we got to uh, again make the connections among these different uh, different steps in that research process so here uh, I have 59 results um, my first result is a case. So this is a case study that has to do with quasi-experimental design. Um, and then you'll see the icons uh, indicating what type of resource that is. So books and reference here, more cases, books and reference. That's a uh, encyclopedia entry. We now have a video here, more videos. And you can narrow or filter your content here on the left-hand side of the screen. So if you uh, are, are specifically looking for videos, you can uh, just choose video content by, um, by changing the content type on the left. Um, or if you wanted to, let's see here, if you looked wanted to look at data sets, data sets are a way to uh, look at how people have analyzed data and uh, use actually use the uh, data yourself as practice. Uh, we also have results for the project planner that are coming in here. So we didn't see one on this screen, but there are results that, that are pulled in from the project planner. And so when you're ready to view some content, you can just click on it. So I'll, I'll go into what are quasi-experimental designs. And then our full text is going to appear on the screen, but you can also download that content as a PDF document as well. So this was a kind of a, a brief section here, um, but if I decided, you know, I'm going to refer to something very specific in here, um, maybe I'm explaining why quasi-experimental design was selected, and I'm referring to something specific where I need to cite it. Um, I can also click on show page numbers so I know what page number uh, this came from. And so this was on page 86 of this book. Again, you can download it, cite it, um, et cetera, using the, the tools over here on the right hand side. So we've looked at the methods map and the project planner. The next tool is the which stats test. It allows you to answer a handful of multiple choice questions to see what statistical method is best for your data. Um, and also you're able to create and use uh, 
other users reading lists, which can also be handy as you're um, starting to explore information related to your methodology and design. So here I can search within all of the reading lists or browse the publicly available reading lists. Uh, if you choose to make your own reading list, you will have to create a profile here in Sage Research Methods. This does not connect automatically to any of your uh, out other uh, university logins, so you'll just want to go ahead and follow the steps to create your profile. So if I wanted to see if there were any reading lists on quantitative or quali we'll do qualitative research this time. I'm just going to type in the word qualitative. And then you'll see a lot of results uh, which you can narrow on the left hand side. So let's say, you know, I am in education. I'm going to apply that filter and see if there are any more specific lists that associate with education. Applied, not so much. Applied organizational psychology. It says classroom talk. So some of them may. But some of these, you know, you don't know what they are. You know, another student and another university has just created them with their course code. Okay, so those are the reading lists. So we've looked at those tools. Uh, there's also a way to browse by discipline here. Uh, so if you are, for example, in social work, we can pull up results for uh, books and resources that are most heavily associated with that discipline. Or maybe not most heavily associated, but more, more appropriate for social work. And so it gives you a very, very brief overview of research methods as it relates to social work. And then you'll start to see all of the appropriate results for that discipline. So Sage Research Methods is really going to be a crucial resource for you as you are exploring the research methods terrain. Um, and you can certainly contact the library if you do have any questions about finding any content in here um, or accessing anything. We're certainly happy to help. As you gain more knowledge about your research methods, and design, uh, you may want to, and, and you have this solid background information and you've written or considered about which methods you're using um, or your research design, you may want to locate scholarly journal articles on your research topic that use a particular type of methodology, right? Because by looking at research articles that use a particular methodology, you may learn a lot about your field and um, see how that applies more specifically to your study. So let's go back to our research methods and design guide in the library, and we'll start talking more about that. So here on the scholarly articles tab here is where um, we have put appropriate databases. So we have at the top of this area a list of two databases, AP Psych Articles and AP Psych Info. And the reason why these are highlighted is because these are the only two databases um, that are available in the library, which allows you to limit your search results based on a particular methodology. So you can see that here in our screenshot. Um, so there is no way to do that in our other databases, so that's why I like to highlight it here. But obviously, as the name suggests, uh, these databases are from the American Psychological Association, so they are more heavily associated with uh, psychology and related disciplines. That being said, there is going to be a little bit of overlap with other social sciences, more specifically business 
and education, you see a lot of overlap. So it can be worth your while to check out these databases, but it may not necessarily be the best bet for everyone. But let me click into this. I'm going to start with AP Psych articles, and then we'll take a look at how we can narrow that uh, by methodology. Okay. So what we want to do first is click on the advanced search tab here underneath that basic search box. And uh, let's say we wanted to find articles, let's see, about employee engagement. And we wanted them to be quantitative in nature. So I'm going to uh, type in employee engagement up here at the top. And I'm going to, going to scroll down on my screen until I see that methodology box here. So in this methodology box, I can continue scrolling down until I see uh, what I am interested in. So I, I think I just went a little bit too fast. So I see I can even narrow it if I'm looking for interviews or focus groups, if I'm doing a, looking for literature reviews, a meta-analysis, meta-synthesis, uh, but here's where I can see qualitative or quantitative. So I'm going to say that I want quantitative research. Now, if you wanted more than one of these, uh, you can use your control button to highlight more than one but I'm just going to say quantitative studies for the purposes of this demonstration, and I'm going to press search. And then we'll see that we have 187 articles that used a quantitative method on employee engagement. And so uh, I can easily go back to that uh, advanced search if I wanted to try something else, or if I'm ready to remove this limiter on the methodology, I can X out of this on the left-hand side of the screen there. Once I'm here in Psych Articles, I can easily pop over to Psych Info as well by clicking on Choose Databases. Um, I can also search them simultaneously as well uh, if I wanted to. I'm just going to uncheck uh, psych articles and we'll go into psych info just so I can show you the same way to uh, limit your results by methodology there. And you'll see that it has retained my search terms. So I'm just going to click on advanced search. Again, the search terms are there at the top of the screen. And now I can scroll down on my screen. There's a few more limiters here and here is our methodology limiter. So in this case, if I wanted to stick with quantitative, I can. Um, if I wanted to say, well, I, you know, I'm actually doing a systematic review um, for my methodology, you could choose systematic review here and then hit search. So there are 35 results for uh, the exact phrase employee engagement um, and by the way those quotation marks do indicate exact phrase searches so uh, we know that we're looking for employee uh, and engagement with no words in between and so we just have 35 results in this case and we can see results for dissertations as well which we're going to talk about um, more extensively in a moment now I wish that I could say that the Roadrunner search has that methodology limiter as well, but it, is, it does not. Um, but that shouldn't stop us. We still have ways to narrow our results to quantitative or qualitative studies or a, a specific um, design, uh, but it's going to take using keywords in order to do that, like we've done in this screenshot here where we're looking for job satisfaction um, and then quantitative within the abstract. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do an example Roadrunner search. So I'll open that up. 
and we can stick with our sort of topic of employee engagement. So I'm going to say that I'm looking for employee engagement, and I'm also looking at how that relates to turnover. And I also want those uh, studies to be qualitative. Now, including the word qualitative here does not necessarily mean that the article has taken a qualitative approach. It just means that the word qualitative appears somewhere in the article's title, abstract, subject terms, full text, or references, if I leave it as select a field optional. Now, another thing that you can do is say that I only want articles where they say qualitative in the abstract, because if they're saying qualitative in the abstract, they are likely identifying this is a qualitative study very explicitly, right? Um, so you may not necessarily always want to limit that term to the abstract, but uh, for this case, it, it's going to make us it's going to make it easier for us to identify uh, these qualitative studies. So I'm going to leave that in the abstract. Uh, maybe I'll leave those outside of the abstract. And then I'm going to put on my scholarly and peer-reviewed journal limiter, and then I'm going to press search. So again, it's not an absolute guarantee that these are qualitative studies, but this is our best technique that we can use to try to pinpoint those qualitative studies. So as we're looking through our results here, make this a little bit bigger. As we're looking through our results here, we see that um, you know this is an article about reducing employee turnover, and our um, highlighted term qualitative is here. The purpose of this qualitative multiple case study was to. Um, and then again, we can go down. Um, let's see. This uses quantitative and qualitative information here. I'll continue scrolling down here, and then we see, uh, let's see, the qualitative study was undertaken to investigate strategies used to improve employee engagement, and it goes on from there. So that did help us to pinpoint qualitative studies uh, that do relate to our research topic. Um, if you then, are, you know, maybe are getting a little bit more specific and you have a particular particular, um, I guess, aspect that you're looking for, like, um, you know, quasi-experimental or experimental or um, phenomenology, you can also type that into the uh, box as well. Instead, I'm just going to say, like, maybe I know at this point I am looking to conduct interviews with employees. Um, and so I'm going to just type in the word interviews here. So that's something that you can type in as well. So you can play around with this, changing the search terms, you know, keeping your topic keywords there, and then changing the terms to try to pinpoint those articles that used the same approach as you. Let's see. So I, I can, like I said, maybe try phenomenology, or I can try one of these uh, suggestions, phenomenology or phenomenological or lived experience. I'll choose phenomenology, and I'll show you the truncation here so that I look for either phenomenology or phenomenological uh, by using that asterisk. That's going to look for any alternate endings of the word. So that could either be a Y or an I there. So I'll do that. And so there's just 18 here, right? We were very specific. We only wanted phenomenological research. And now we have 18 results here. And we can see our terms using a phenomenological approach. So hopefully this technique is going to be helpful to you going forward as you're trying to find uh, literature that relates to your topic, but they use a similar approach to you. 
Now the last resource that I want to focus on before we wrap up is uh, looking at other students' dissertations. This is certainly going to be a very beneficial approach to seeing um, how other students, uh, what methods and um, methods and designs they used for their particular um, research topics. So let's go ahead and jump into one of these and I'll explain the differences. Uh, ProQuest dissertations and theses at North Central University contains only NCU dissertations and then the global version does contain over 3 million dissertations from all over the world. Um, so it really just depends on what your um, Looking at if you're looking more specifically for NCU examples uh, because you want to see how that student uh, specifically adhered to NCU, uh, you can certainly go into NCU. I typically recommend uh, going for the global version just to see um, all that available research out there. And so, as an example, we'll search for employee engagement. Employee engagement as an exact phrase. I'm also going to say turnover, right? We were interested in turnover. And I'm going to add a row. And I'm curious as to whether or not any students use mixed methods research. And so I'm going to put employee engagement and I'm going to try turnover in the title and mixed methods in the abstract. We'll see. I haven't tried this search yet. OK, so that was too specific. I'm going to say employee engagement still in the title of the dissertation because I really want to focus on that. And by the way, when you do that, I don't recommend uh, limiting searches for scholarly articles to the title of the scholarly articles. In other words, in Roadrunner search, I don't recommend using the title because that can often be too limiting and then you might overlook some really relevant research articles. Um, but when you're looking for dissertations, you sort of really want them to be on your particular focus. So sometimes I'll use that title search. Um, and we have only 19 results, which is fine. We're not interested in looking at hundreds or thousands of other student dissertations. So we have a, a handful of dissertations that we can take a look at. Um, and so here um, we have a way to access the full text, but you may want to do the quick look feature. So that will only pop up as you hover over each record. When you look at the quick look, uh, that's going to pull up that abstract for you. And so here you can see using mixed methods, um, uh, a specific survey grounded theory. Uh, so you can see that I'm going to X out of there. We'll look at our next one, quick look. The research adopts a pragmatic approach by combining qualitative and quantitative methods. So you get the idea. Using that, uh, what, whatever it is you're focusing on, mixed methods, qualitative, um, quantitative, or you can type in, you know, what type of research you're doing, phenomenological, experimental, whatever that may be, a case study, um, you can put that in here. So we'll change this to case study, just as another example. And now you can see we have 84 results for um, other student dissertations that use case study. Now, one more thing I want to point out here. When we are searching in ProQuest dissertations and theses, we are searching just that, both dissertations and master's theses. So if you want to eliminate any master's theses, we do have this doctoral dissertations only checkbox here. I don't think that's always necessary, but I do like to point that out uh, just in case you are only interested in doctoral uh, results. And I think you might have to 
update your search again once you've clicked that uh, checkbox. So let's refresh that. Okay, so now that eliminated, I think, maybe just four results there. Uh, and then you can uh, continue searching through our results. Now, um, as we're looking through our results, um, look at our second result here. I love I love NCU because they always come up in the search results and I don't even plan these searches and they always show up, which is awesome. Um, so keep your eye out for there, but if once you're here, you actually just only want to uh, reduce the results to NCU dissertations, you do have the ability to do that using the university institution limiter here on the left-hand side. So when I drop that down, it's going to display Oh, wow, it's like just really clicking around. I think it's acting a little bit strange right now. Um, but you saw how it does pop that down. I'm not sure what's going on, why it keeps um, jumping back up. So I'm just going to click again just to double check. But no, it was not allowing that uh, menu to stay expanded. Um, so I'll follow up with that. Um, I'm sure when you do it, it's not going to do anything like that. I probably just have to clear my cache or something. Um, so give that a try. You can limit that just to NCU dissertations. And so just to recap, um, we saw how to use SAGE research methods really to find that strong background and, and gain that understanding about that research methods terrain and help us decide uh, what method or design that we are going to use for our own research. Then we talked about taking it a step further and finding scholarly articles which used a particular methodology. Uh, and so we talked about APA psych articles and APA psych infos, the only databases that allow you to limit by methodology. And then we talked about um, searching in the Roadrunner search by using search terms, quant qualitative, quantitative, mixed methods, case study, phenomenology, any of those can be used as search terms, which is super handy. And then finally, looking at other students' dissertations in order to see um, how they use that particular methodology or design and how that might translate to uh, your dissertation as well. So your dissertation chair is going to be your first uh, point of contact when it comes to your research methods and design. but the library can certainly assist you with finding more information or articles that used a certain uh, approach. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you do have any questions, um, and we're certainly happy to help.